So here we go with a lesson on trend line equations. So we were learning about how to find slope um, for a straight line. Also, we were talking about how to write equations in slope-intercept form in prior lessons. So today we're going to actually head back to scatter plots, which um, don't really form a straight line, but they could be in a, an association where there's like a straight line effect, either a positive correlation or association or a negative association or correlation. So we're going to look at how the dots are appearing, whether they be sloping upwards or downwards, to create a trend line for a scatter plot. So in many situations, the equation of a trend line can be useful in making predictions, especially when predicting a value that cannot be seen on a graph. Review the steps for writing equations of linear graphs below. So you may recall when we were looking at straight line graphs that we would choose any two points on that line. Well, here in step one, we're going to choose any two points on the trend line that is drawn, and we're, we're going to set up a ratio of rise over run to find the slope of the line. The slope has the lowercase letter m. Then we're going to look at the y-axis, and we're going to find the y-intercept of the line, which is the lowercase letter b. The y-intercept is known as b. We're going to see where that line might hit or cross the y-axis to find that y-intercept. Then thirdly, once we have the slope and we have the y-intercept, the m, the b, we're going to use our format y equals mx plus b to write the equation for that line in that slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. All right, so here we have three examples of scatter plots where they've drawn a trend line for each of these three scatter plots. Um, again, each of these little dots on the coordinate plane represents a piece of data, um, a x comma y in parentheses, kind of ordered pair. All right, so what has happened was somebody took the time to draw this trend line um, within the middle of these little points or pieces of information or data. So in number one, I can see all those little dots everywhere and somebody drew a trend line within the mix. So what we're gonna do is try and find an equation or write an equation in slope intercept form for those trend lines that are shown. So on the first one, um, I see, let's see, let's t pick two points that are kind of on this line. Let me grab a red pen here so it shows up a little bit better on the screen. I'm gonna choose this ordered pair, or this line intersecting point and this one. So where I drew the red dot first, I see it's an x value of three and a y value of seven. So that is an ordered pair that would fall on that trend line. Another ordered pair that I highlighted here in red, um, it looks like it was at ordered pair six comma six. So I'm gonna use those two ordered pairs um, and I'm, I can count, I, probably the counting method is faster than the slope intercept form, uh, I'm sorry, than the slope formula method. Um, you can take y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, but to just save a little bit of time, um, use your counting method, and I notice um, everything's numbered by ones. <laughs> it's very important to look at the numbering on the axes. Um, I see numbering by ones on the x and, and the y axis, so that's good. So if I go down one box from that first point, down by one, and then count over the number of boxes, I get a negative one, and so that's my rise, which is actually a fall. And then I go one, two, three boxes to the right. So it looks like slope is equal to negative one over three. So I found the m, the slope. Next, I'm going to find the y-intercept. So that means where the line hits the y-axis, and it looks like it's right here on the number eight. So b equals eight. Using the m 
and the b, I would have y equals negative one-third x, and since the eight was positive, it's like adding eight. All right, and if we reveal, you can see the answer was y equals negative one-third x plus eight for that equation. All right, the second graph. I'm going to, again, see, since they drew this trend line, I need to identify where, what points might fall on that trend line. So I notice there could be a point right here and another point right here. But things are not being counted by ones on the y-axis. As you can see, it looks like things are counted by 20s. So I would go from point to point, and you can see there's like other points I could have chosen where the line has intersected a grid marking very nicely and squarely on that grid. So I'm going up by 20 over 2. So it's a positive 20 over 2. And then if I hop from this point to the next point, I again, I go up from 100 to 120, so that's a rise of 20 and a run of 2. So it's still 20 over 2. So it looks like the slope is 20 over 2 each time from point to point. Sometimes I check a few points to make sure that I've grabbed two good points that fall on the grid markings. 20 over 2 is 10, so I have a slope of 10. And then what's my y-intercept? I'm looking for the place that the line, the trend line, hits the y-axis and it's at 60. So m was 10, whoops, let me just erase this, and we've got b equals 60. So my equation that's hiding under the box is probably going to say y equals 10x plus 60. Alright, assuming I've made no mistakes, let me just reveal underneath the box. Oh, yes, y equals 10x plus 60. Okay, and number three, I see they've drawn a trend line in the midst or within that, the, all those data points. And so you could see this highlighted, this trend line right here. Let me just pick a couple points that fall nicely on the grid and maybe do the counting method again. I see this time on the y-axis things are counted by ones and the x-axis looks like it's counted by fives. So be careful with that. It looks like that line is actually intersecting the grid markings every little square going down. So I'm going down by one, so it's like a negative one, and when I go one box to the right, it's actually up by fives. So the slope is negative one-fifth. And where does my trend line hit the y-axis? It looks like it hits at the number nine here. So b equals a positive nine because it was hitting the y-axis at a nine. So what would my equation be? y equals negative one-fifth x oops, and a plus nine. Hopefully that's hiding again underneath this box. And yep, y equals negative one-fifth x plus nine. All right, now here comes um, some practice writing and applying the equation of a trend line to a real world problem here. I'm gonna have to move myself back and forth out of the way. All right, so the scatter plot below shows the number of items in a load of laundry and the number of minutes it takes to fold the laundry. Oh my goodness, laundry. Uh, maybe there's some people that love to do laundry, but okay. So we do the laundry and then we gotta fold it. So it takes, number of minutes is on the y-axis, the number of items is on the x. So it looks like the more items that you're laundering, the higher the number of minutes it takes to fold. <clears throat> Makes sense to me. All right, so, oops. 
we are going to write a trend line equation and specify what each variable represents in the context of the situation. All right, so let me just show you if I didn't know what was underneath that box. Again, I would pick two points that fall nicely on the grid markings, and one of them happens to be one of the scatter plot dots. And I count up by fives, it looks from box to box, and to the right by 10 it goes from a 10 to a 20. So it was a 5 over 20, up 5 to the right by 20. So it looks like slope is 5 over 20. I'm, I'm sorry, why am I saying 20? 5 over 10, were you just shouting at me from your computer? It's 5 over 10. 20 minus 10 was 10. All right, and that reduces to 1 half. So it looks like the slope is going to be 1 half. And the y-intercept is 0 because this line, this trend line, is starting at the origin where x and y are both equal to zero. So what type of equation can we have where m is a half and b equals zero? We can have y equals one half x plus zero, but you don't need to say plus zero. So you really can just have y equals one half x or 0.5, okay, so instead of writing zero, um, instead of writing one half x, you could write 0.5x, that also is fine. All right, so what does the each variable represent? X is the number of items in the laundry, and Y is the number of minutes it takes to fold it. We could just tell by reading the labels on the axes, right? All right, so now next. Use that equation to predict the time it would take to fold a lot of load of laundry containing 60 items. Notice the number of items on the x-axis only goes to 50, but if you extend, you know these trend lines go on and on and on and on and keep going off that grid. It's just, we're not going to make a humongous grid here. So there's a way to find and predict how um, many minutes it's going to take um, based upon using that equation, y equals 0.5x. So what we're going to do here is figure out that it's going to take about 30 minutes to fold a load of laundry containing 60 items. How is that the case? Well, if they tell you 60 items, what was the number of items? The x value. So you're going to replace the x value with 60. So you're going to say y equals 0 0.5 times 60, and doesn't that come out to 30 minutes? That's where they're coming out with 30 minutes to fold laundry containing 60 items. And you can see, um, even if you like extended that trend line, I guess that was drawn on the graph, if it did go on forever and ever, you kind of might be able to see, oh yeah, it's kind of trending towards 30 minutes for about 60 items down here. Okay, so it kind of does make sense and it is a reasonable and correct answer. The last question, letter C here, um, it took Joey 22 minutes to fold a load of laundry. Use the equation to predict the number of items in the load that Joey folded. So what if they give you the minutes? Well, the minutes is on my y-axis. So the minutes, 22 minutes, would be right about, just highlight that in red on my graph, would be just above 20. But yet, oops, I just indented my, oh, there we go. Just indented my little stylus pen here. Okay. If I grab that pen and I look for tw about 22 minutes, notice it would fall, the trend line would meet it somewhere out in time, right? If I extended everything there, about 22 minutes. But there's a way to figure it out. 22 minutes is on the y-axis, so I would put 22, use my equation and put 22 equals 0 0.5 times something and use an inverse operation to solve for x or the number of items. So if you take 22 divided by 0 0.5, how many minutes do you get? I think it comes out to about 44 minutes, right? You just substitute the 22 in the y value 
in the equation y equals 0.5x and you use inverse operations to solve. So 22 equals 0.5x. When you divide by the 0.5, you get 44 items. All right, so once you get that equation, you can make predictions or um, assumptions about future numbers that might not be on the graph. So you're gonna have to be able to answer questions about things that fall way up high off the graph. All right, in this scatter plot, scatter plot number five shows the number of drinks in several vending machines and the number of days since the vending machine was last stocked. Use the data to answer A through C. So first they want us to write the trend line equation, like a y equals mx plus b format, and specify what each variable represents in the context of the situation. So if I was looking at this, um, I could see the first spot. I actually can choose that y-intercept. I know the b is 300. The y-intercept's 300 drinks. And then to get m, the slope, um, it looks like I've got a few different choices to make. And I'm going down by 50, so a negative 50. And then it looks like everything on the x-axis is numbered by ones. So one, two, three, four. So down by 50, over by 4, down by 50 again to get from the next point, over by 4. So it's always negative 50 over 4. Okay, let's see what equation they came up with. Okay, so where did they get the negative 12.5? Well, in your calculator, if you take the negative 50 over 4, you just divide, you get negative 12.5. So the slope was that negative 50 over 4, which is negative 12 and a half, x plus 300. What does the x represent? The number of days since um, the vending machine was last stocked. What does y represent? The number of drinks in the machine. Several vending machines. All right now we're going to use that equation that we found for the trend line to make a prediction of the number of drinks that would be in the vending machine that was last stocked 12 days ago. Just notice how that's not on my graph, so I can't just pick that or find that point and answer that question. So what can I do if I know 12 days? What value is days? It's the x value. It's on the x-axis. So I'm going to take y equals negative 12.5, plug in the 12 days for x, and add 300, and see what y is equal to. So I'm going to take neg oops, negative 12.5 times 12 days, and then add 300, and it's 150. So 150 drinks. We'll be down to 150 drinks. And that is the answer, 150 drinks. All right, in letter C, it says, use the equation to predict the number of days since a vending machine was stocked if it currently contains 50 drinks. So if drinks is 50, that's my y value. Let's use the equation y equals negative 12.5x plus 300, and we're going to plug in 50 drinks into the y value. So 50 equals negative 12.5 times something plus 300. So this is like solving a two-step equation where we would take away the constant term, which is the 300, so we would subtract 300 from both sides. and 50 minus 300 is a negative 250. Bring down the equal sign on the wall, the negative 12.5x. And then we divide by negative 12.5 on both sides. And a negative divided by negative is a positive. So, and a negative 250 divided by a negative 12.5 is 20. So I predict 20 days would be there. And that is the answer for that, 20 days. 
Moving right along to number six. Julian made a scatter plot to show the number of band members at his school over the years. And you know, we've got a lot of great band kids in our school um, and into the high school. Great band program. All of our three kids went through the band programs in the high school next door and marching band and really enjoyed it. Did really well. Now the trend line of a scatter plot had an equation of y equals 6x plus 25 where y represents the total number of band members and x represents the number of years since 1990. Hmm. How many students would you expect to be members of the band in the year 2005? Okay, so what you would do here is plug in, I guess, the number of years since 1990. So if I take 2005 minus 1990, I think I get 15 years there. And then if I, okay, so it looks like 15 years. So I take the year 2005 minus the year 1990 and I get 15 years. And then what am I going to do with those years? X represents the number of years since 1990. I'm going to plug in that 15 in place of X. So I'm going to say Y equals 6 times 15, which I think is 90. And then I'm going to add 25. And it should come out to 115 students. So hiding under my box, the big reveal. Drum roll, please. I think it should be 115 students. Yes. Thanks for the drum roll. All right, number or letter B. In what year would you expect the band to have 85 members? So where did the number of band members go? Where the Y is. Um, so Y represents the total number of band members. So total number of band members, and if we're talking about 85 members, you're going to plug in the 85 in place of the Y value. So you're going to say 85 as your Y value equals 6 times some number plus 25. And you're going to make a wall, and you're going to solve this two-step equation. Take away 25 which is 60 equals 6x. Divide by 6 on both sides and you get 60 divided by 6 is 10. So, oh, but it says in what year would you expect the band members to have 85 members? Year 10, okay. So year 10 would be the year 2000 because you take 1990 and add 10 years to it. Okay, so um, that was x equals 10, and then we take the 1990 and add 10 years to that, and that's where you're getting the year 2000. Okay, so a little different there with that question. Oops, already forgot to hide the answers to a, b, and c. All right, the scatter plot shows the elevation of several hikers compared to the number of minutes they've been hiking. Use the scatter plot to mark each statement as true or false and correct and rewrite any false statements. The trend line of the equation, I'm showing that it's false. Let's see why it's false. Is the trend line of the equation y equals negative 900 plus x plus 20? No, I think what they ha what they did wrong there is the y-intercept looks like it should be 900. So instead of 20 right here, they should have put 900. The slope from 900 to 800 is down by 100, and I go from a 0 to a 5. So 100 over 5, which is 20, 100 divided by 5 is 20. They just put the slope in the wrong place and the y-intercept in the wrong place. So the trend line equation should be y equals negative 20x plus 900. So that's why it was false. 
Um, number letter B, you could expect a hiker who has been hiking for 20 minutes to be at an elevation of 500 feet. So elevation is your Y value. Is Y going to be 500 when X is 20 minutes? So let's see. Let's use the equation Y equals negative 20 X plus 900 and let's see if in 20 minutes on the x-axis, so if I replace the x with 20 minutes, I'm going to have negative 20 times 20, that's a negative 400, plus 900, is that, that's 500. So y equals 500. Yep, that will be true because it will come out to 500 feet. All right, and then you've got the last one. You could expect a hiker at an elevation of 200 feet to have spent about 45 minutes hiking. So what do we have to do for that one? The elevation is your Y value. So the elevation of 200 feet, that's Y. Okay, so if we substitute in place of y in our trend line equation 200 equals negative 20 times something plus 900 if we solve that subtract 900 from both sides start solving for x you've got a negative 700 equals negative 20 x divide by negative 20 on both sides and a negative 700 divided by a negative 20 comes out to 35. So that's a false. It actually does, it comes out to x equals 35 minutes, not 45 minutes. Alright, so underneath that last box, it does say you could expect a hiker at an elevation of 200 feet to have spent about 35 minutes hiking. So here you can see there's some applications where we can actually plot some points of different people's activities or different happenings from samples or surveys and plot points like a scatter plot. Try and draw a trend line to kind of fall within those dots and then once you have that trend line you can actually pick two points and look for the y-intercept and make an equation out of that trend line. And then of course for real stuff we can answer questions and make predictions for the future that might not fall on the graph. So thanks so much for joining me. Stay tuned when we move on into some more study of data and different ways of presenting our data. Thanks for joining me. See you next time. Bye.